G'day folks, welcome to another equipment autopsy. This time I am getting around to doing the uh, sand and scroll compressor, the one that's fully locked up, like completely immovable. Um, yeah, Brad gave me this one, came off a Holden 305 V8. Uh, it's barely make out markings on the label, but it's a Sandon TR seven zero something. I can't make anything more than that. It's completely illegible. Ooh, excuse me. Don't drink too much Bundy before you do equipment autopsies. <laughs> but it's a public holiday, so I can enjoy a couple of Bundy and Cokes and uh, pull stuff to bits, just like I do on the weekends. Um, fairly simple compressor, scroll compressors always are. Um, I found out inside there is actually a diode that filters any uh, back EMF when the magnetic clutch disengages, so that's kind of handy. Any spike from the uh, clutch disengaging. The rest of that is main DC, so you've got DC in through the pressure switch cutout. DC goes through here through a thermal switch so if the compressor overheats it opens the circuit and breaks the connection to the clutch because it goes straight through here to the uh, electromagnetic clutch that engages this plate and drives the compressor. They're really simple, there's not much to them. So I'm going to remove all these parts which I've already loosened off previously but that has a little diode in it and the diode simply goes to ground. Um, you can have, main DC doesn't go to ground of course, only back EMF seems to go through the diode whereas direct current will only flow one way or alternating current or whatever comes back through the uh, through the system goes past the diode and straight to ground. Um, that's a pressure switch depresses that little shader in there when you screw it on. Knowing what shader valves are like it probably leak as soon as you take it off the old Schrader valves are a nice invention, but on refrigerant systems in particular, they seem to leak like mad after a while. This one's probably baked too. Oh yeah, she's cooked. All sooty and black. Oop, lost that one. That's a clean example. The Schrader valve's an interesting little invention. Very handy. It's got a simple seat. When you depress the pin on the inside, it opens to the other side. Of course, if that seat goes bad, gets contaminants on it, there's a little bit of rubber in there, which can be attacked by oil. As soon as that goes bad, you start getting air leakage or gas leakage. And these Schrader valves here are for car tyres. They're not rated for refrigerant pressures, temperatures, and probably not even oil contact. But you can see there, there's a rubber seal on the bottom of it. Um, yeah, just because it's a Schrader valve, don't assume that it's rated for refrigerant pressures and temperatures and start putting them in compressors. It's a mistake I've seen made before. Uh, the seats, the, the rubber seals on them also aren't rated for oil contact and they're typically not rated for the high temperatures that say the discharge side of this compressor will run out. So you got to pick a specific refrigeration grade Schrader valve core. I mean, they're great, great for car tyres, but they don't run that hot, and very rarely does a Schrader valve go bad and start leaking. But it's typically after you just use it. I've had it happen before. I put air in my, one of my tyres, and the Schrader valve won't stop leaking. So I just screw the cap on tight, drive home, spin it out with a valve tool, quickly stuff a new one in, and just top the tyre up again. No problem. In a refrigerant system it's another matter because you're releasing gas to atmosphere and you've got to connect up a recharge bottle. You've got to add more gas to the system to replace what you've lost. So leaking schraders on a refrigerant system are a pain in the ass. So that's a discharge pressure port. Got some nice little uh, fittings again. That should be uh, 1 8 BSP. These are what I'm actually like. I like collecting these. These are very handy for high pressure experiments because I can drill and tap 1 8 BSP fittings into pretty much anything. I have the drill and the tap to do it. And that one's nasty, and that's got a lot of metal paste and stuff around it. It's on the suction side. Anyway, this is going to be a fairly long video. 
but I've got work tomorrow so I can let it upload while I'm out. All the better. Now where do I put my spanner? Already sort of gone over this, so I know what's loose and what's not. But I haven't loosened any of these off. I just wanted to make sure I can get the clutch off. This one's splined, it's not keyed. Very rough, too. You can see where it's been slipping. As soon as this compressor locked up, it would have just kept slipping against the clutch plate making horrible noises. Oops, no, that thermal switch is well and truly stuck in there. Oh, well, that's not important. off easy. <laughs> no we're bashing this one against the table either. The bearing's still good. So these are handy because you can machine, you can punch all this bearing and everything out, machine a spigot of steel to fit in there, weld it and then just re-bore it so you can mount this pulley on anything. You don't have to disregard the clutch surface and everything, even machine that bit flatter or just chamfer these, break these surfaces and you got yourself a nice engine pulley. So I keep these. Even these ones, punch the bearing out from the other side, weld a spigot of steel in there and just fully machine it and bore it, key slot it, and you've got yourself a double groove pulley. Probably a bit more effort than it would take to actually go down the shop and buy one for like 40 bucks or something, but at least you're recycling. <laughs> Deep sir clip. A lot of clutch coils. I'm gonna to have to find a way to pop these. Definitely gotta have good pairs of circlip pliers for these jobs. Really not much other way of getting them off, at least not destructively. <coughs> 12 volt clutch coil. has kind of died. This thing hasn't had any oil in it for a long time. Oh, look at all that ground metal. It's dead. It dead. <laughs> oh, this compressor's been run without oil at all. Either it's leaked out somewhere or they've done something to the system and haven't replaced the oil afterwards. It did. <laughs> this one's going to be ugly inside.
Ooh. <laughs> Look at that metal to metal exchange on the scroll. Holy shit. Wow. It's gotten extremely hot and exchanged a ton of metal with the other side. Everything's scrambled and that's not turning at all. That surface is ruined, it's all peened over and half melted. The inner tip of the scroll is completely gone. Wow, I've never seen one this bad before. Then this is alloy, it's not a cast iron one like the Copeland uh, normal refrigeration scrolls and the Danfoss scrolls. This is die cast aluminium. Wow, that's taken a lot of beating. <laughs> Absolutely no oil. That's amazing. There is no oil in this damn thing. I'd say they've done some work on the refrigerant system and they haven't replaced the oil. It's a chunk taken out there. Pieces of the tip seal are mashed up and gone through the system. Total destruction. Yeah, it's like never sees paste. <laughs> What little oil is here just made a paste out of all the ground metal. Well that's something for the hall of shame. That's really impressive, I'm going to keep it as it is. It's got the same kind of thrust set up as the last sand that I stripped down. Ball bearings and a big uh, radial ball bearing. Or thrust bearing and radial bearing. That's uh, trashed. All that shiny surface there is actually just picked up and galled. It's just scrape, scrape, scrape. And ingesting bits of material from the rest of the system. Bits of material off here, bits from the ball bearing race is failing. Doesn't want to move. No. That's stuck. There's a little bit of oil in there and a ton of metallic debris. <laughs> yeah, all that metal debris has come out through the scrolls discharge line or discharge valve. Look at that. Total carnage. I love that. <laughs> Not as much fun dismantling something that's still in good working order. It's more fun when they're totally broken. What's that pin from? I don't know what that's from but it shouldn't be in there. I wonder if it's off that uh, dowel pin. No. Don't know. Discharge valve stuck partly open. Actually discharge valve's half broken. Yeah. Discharge valve's toast. Look at that. Oh, look, it's got a steel thrust plate on it. That explains why that surface is in better condition than the rest. It's a shim. Well, that's the worst scroll I've ever seen. In case, in case you don't know how a scroll works, they just orbit like that. Well, at least this one does. This one's fixed and stationary. This one's supposed to orbit, and all it does is squeeze gas around through the spiral to the center and squeeze it out through this discharge valve in here. That's all the scroll does, it just orbits. There's no pistons, there's no reciprocating mechanism, it just goes round, round, round like that. 
Um, I think the only thing more simple would probably be a rotary compressor. Like normal air conditioner rotary compressors, they have a crankshaft and a rotor and a vane, so there's three moving parts. This one here has a lot more moving parts in the way of the cycloid converter in here. But again, there's probably just as much expense in making one of these as there is a rotary these days. The scroll's getting simpler and simpler, cheaper and cheaper. I think they're actually more efficient and require less horsepower though. They're a lot smoother in their delivery of refrigerant. So, yeah. That's something for the uh, trophy wall. And I hope Brad uh, enjoys this video because he gave me this one. V8 Jagnut. Go sub subscribe to V8 Jagnut. Uh, yeah. That's why you don't run your air conditioning compressor when it makes funny noises. In this case, they've run it till it died. <laughs> Thanks for watching.